If you're learning Latin or Greek, you've probably heard of the website Perseus, but if you haven't, it will probably change the way you study these subjects. And even if you have heard of it before, hopefully I can show some deeper ways of using this tool, which will still be new and even more useful for you. It's not an exaggeration to claim that I wouldn't have taken classics at uni had I not found this and all the help that it gives. So first of all, let's talk about exactly what Perseus is. Perseus is a website created by Tufts University, which is basically a massive documentation of loads of classical texts, translations. If you just go on the internet and type in Perseus, the website comes up first ahead of the Greek god, which I think is quite funny. Perseus.tufts.edu, this is what we're talking about. Primarily, you use this to find the Greek or Latin text that you're looking at, and what's really brilliant is you don't have to buy these texts basically if you don't want to, because you can find them all here online for free. Of course, it's on a website, so you can look at as much as you want. Let's start with that. Once you go onto the website, how you find the text you're looking for. I personally think the best way and the most easiest is simply just to use this search in the top right hand corner. So for example, if I'm looking for the Iliad, I might simply uh, just type in Iliad, press enter, and it will hopefully load and come up with all these different options. I'll just pick this one, Homer Iliad Greek, but if I wanted the translation, I would go for the one below, this one in English, and we have various commentaries on it as well. So I'll just click this Iliad Greek here. Another way of doing it is going through the collections or text button. I think this is longer, but it's the more comprehensive way of doing it. So you would click here. If you're looking at Greek and Roman materials, obviously you press this button here. You would go down to the author, and this just gives you a sense of exactly how much there is here. You would go the, all the way down to Homer, and again you would see, okay fine, yes, I'm looking for Homer in the Greek, so I'm going to click this button, and you'll end up on the exact same page. So we're at this stage now where we have the text we're looking at in front of us, and there are all these things on the side. Let's walk through what happens here. First of all, once you click on a text, it's important to know that it will take you right to the start of it. So here it's taken us to book one, which it shows us at the front, and card one, which it tells us here are the following lines, one to 32. And again, what we have in this button here is Hom, meaning Homer, the author. Then the second bit is the text, so that's I-L for Iliad. That's not the Roman numerals two, that's I-L for Iliad. And then we have one for the book, and then one for the chapter. So hypothetically, if I wanted to search the 25th line of book 20, I would change this, and I would type in 20.25, if I press enter, after loading, it will take me to book 20, which we can see here. And it's actually still in the first card, and then I would just scroll down to find the line I'm looking for. Another way of doing this, which I don't personally use much, but I guess is the more official way, is coming to the left-hand side, where you would see the table of contents of the work you're looking at. And I would click book 20 here, and then I would see all the different lines, and I could choose which card I was looking at. You can also use these arrows here. So I'm on the first card right now, which goes down to line 30 roughly. But if I just want to go to the next one, instead of having to change it here, I can just press the next card and it will take me two lines, roughly 31 all the way down to the next page. But let's stick here. So now not only can you find the exact Greek text you're looking for, hopefully you should be able to find the exact bit you're looking for. The next bit is looking at the English, the translation, which is one of the main pros of this website. You can always cross-reference exactly what you need. If we look at the right hand side, this is the first thing that's offered. In fact, we have two English translations. One of them is from 1924, and I just use the most recent one because I don't see why not. But I guess if you're looking for a specific translation, you might use a slightly different one. We have two buttons here. One says focus, one says load. If we press load, it just shows us the English on this right hand side. Again, with the line numbers, so we can easily reference exactly what is what. If you press the focus button, it's actually going to turn the two pages around and so you have your English as your main screen and then you can just load your Greek back or however you would like it. But of course, I tend to go for the Greek on the big page and the English if I'm using it on the small page. Again, in theory, this means you don't have to buy any translations in the future. You can just do it on here. Although sometimes the translations are nice or a bit new and stuff like that. Some of the language can get a bit archaic. Here, for example, it is a bit old, yet verily, for myself will I abide here sitting in a fold of Olympus, wherefrom I will gaze and make glad my heart. But it's pretty clear exactly what it means, so it's up to you whether you want to just use this. So that's the end of the most basic run through of what this website does. Now let's look at some really useful tools which the website has, which is what makes it absolutely game changing as opposed to just a pretty useful tool. 
One brilliant thing about this website is if you have your classical language on the left and you scroll or go over the words with your mouse, you'll realise that every single one of these is actually a hyperlink. And if we click on one, let's say Potom on here, it's going to take us to a new tab and it's going to load that for us. And it tells us grammatically exactly what this word is. It gives us the lemma on this top left hand corner. It tells us a translation or two. It tells us exactly which bit we looked up and grammatically how it fits. This is brilliant because when you're going over your translations, if you're not quite sure how the sentence fits together, even looking at the English on the other side, you can click on some of these words and get a grammatical diagnosis, which really, really helps. If we just go back to our text, if you click on a hyperlink, sometimes you get a more complicated breakdown. For example here, Foyte Sasa, if we click on that, we realise that actually this word here could be one of a number of parts, but they also have some percentages on the side, which I'm not too sure how they work out, but does tend to be right most of the time, giving a breakdown however they've done it of what they reckon it is in this case. If we look on the right hand side of this word search tool, we can see that actually we can put the word in we want ourselves and don't have to go through one of these hyperlinks. This is useful sometimes when you're not exactly going through uh, the text and you're just looking at it for another reason, which is why I have it here as one of my presets. Just have a random word, it doesn't matter what it is, but I don't have to always go through Perseus, etc, etc, etc. I can just click on this little preset, this shortcut, and I can type in exactly whichever word I'm looking for. Um, and it will tell me, you know, if I'm looking at a different textbook, for example, what grammatically I have that I'm looking up. Let's look at one more thing, which is the most advanced and niche use that I discovered recently and is actually really useful as well. When you're searching up one of these words, let's say we have Polukturu, you can use this thing here, which we've seen at the bottom. When we click on this word, it tells us in the whole Iliad, we only see Polukturus or ev every different part of it four times which to me is a really small number, so I'm more likely to not have to remember Polyptuchos in my vocab. If we had a really high number, for example Kratos might be quite high, it's important, probably 100 is quite a lot relatively, to know exactly what the word means, so I would write it down on one of my vocab lists. What you can also do is press on this, and you can actually see once the page loads, after pressing more, the 100 cases it actually appears, so you can cross-reference it, and so it's interesting to see just the uses of the different words. That's sometimes also important because you can work out, is this always comes in the same stock phrase, so I should learn the phrase together. Or actually, this word isn't always like that, so you've probably got to learn the word as a word as opposed to as a phrase. Thanks everyone for watching. I really enjoyed making this video. It's really weird to go back to, with your mind to right to the start and think, what would I need to know absolutely from scratch? And I can't take things for granted that I know now that seem really obvious. I had to really go back so hopefully it was everything clear but hopefully you enjoyed it and found it useful and I'll see you in the next video.